Yeah, a lot of people ask me about the foot market, uh, Brentford foot market, where I used to work as a kid. And anyway, um, yeah, Brentford market, mate, it was an experience. It's um, it's legends. There's all legends in there, and it's something that you'll never see again. The market, it's all finished, that market now. It's gone somewhere in haze. It's a different market altogether. There's forklifts, and, and it's gone. It's gone. And in my days, it was all barrows. The Bowers and the Listers, and, and it's just like a different thing. It was a village. Uh, Brentford Market was a big, big village. There was like thousands of stalls in there, and porters, big porters, massive, massive uh, stands, uh, so much fruit, vegetables. I mean, you know, you walk in the market and you go left and you t go into the big, big, massive, great right, big building, yeah, and it's got about, what, well, I don't know maybe three, four hundred stalls in there, all selling uh, apples, bananas, pears, grapes, peaches, everything, you melons, potatoes, oh, there's so much stuff in there, yeah? And you walk around and you see these porters and they're all big guys, yeah? But the biggest ones are the guys that work on the potatoes and fruit, yeah? A lot of them, a lot of now it's, it's boxes, carbon boxes, in my days, it wasn't cardboard box, it was all wood. Everything was wood, yeah. Um, you had a place, what was the name of that place? Um, Herbs, Herbies, Herbies. I think it was called Herbies. It used to do all the apples, yeah. And they used to have wooden boxes, uh, cultural boxes, and fill up of apples. And I got a job in there uh, just helping out the porters, really. And Bobby Elst, Bobby Elsted. Uh, I think it was Bobby else his name was, uh, this guy, strong, but just wiry, pick up three bushel boxes on his shoulder, walk along with them and throw them on the lister. And these boxes, every box, 40 pound, 50 pound, and just pick them up like as if they're nothing, yeah? And, you know, then I had to go and it was like virtually impossible to pick them up. You know, it's all skills the way I used to do it. And, and nut them, when I used to nut, I mean, I used to see them nut the oranges, mate. Uh, the free, they used to have three tier oranges in the days, and it was all wooden wood boxes, but three three tiers, yeah. And then boxes, under twelve pound, under thirty pound boxes of oranges, a big, massive. I think they stood, stood about what five foot high, maybe a little bit, maybe a big bigger than that. They nut them. Most all the old boys, all the old boys. The old porters in the market, they all have flat caps, not like, like these caps, but flat caps. And there was a nut, there was, everything they used to do, there was a nut, uh, the box of oranges, and the apples, and uh, apples the same, nut, everything. Bob, put, walk up the ladder, bob, jump, jump. I mean, massive arms, massive shoulders, unbelievable, big, massive, up with deltoids. Big bicep, tricep, massive, yeah, and like so powerful. And you see them walk up these, walk up these things, and, and they nut them, you know. And they put them on maybe four or five in, in a line. And they they got ways of stacking things up, certain ways of stacking things up. It's like, and after a while, you're there, yeah. You've been there, and you get to learn how to do it, yeah. But um, the potatoes, uh, they had everything. In them days, the potato sex was about 112, 130 pounds, and it was sacking. You used to have sack potatoes, and it was in sacking. While we were in paper bags, it was in sacking bags. Massive, grubby bags. Five foot long, three foot wide. Bosh, on the head, up the ladder, crash. And they'd be like ridiculous heights, you know what I mean? And then, then porters, in the course of a day, would sell all them potatoes and come budget to them. And they were they're just powerful. And they was to walk around the market, yeah, uh, maybe in T-shirts, vests, and massive, big men, yeah? And it's like, you think, quite fucking hell, mate. These guys are just unbelievable powerful, you know? And me walking, and as you walk through the market, um, in, 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 like, as you come through the, actually, as you come through the market, uh, you've got a security box there, you come through, you do a quick left, it takes you into all these different stands, yeah? And all, every every part of it there is cobbles. 
it's the old cobble, all the old cobble stones where they come down to a certain thing and it's like everybody's got the ballers rushing around in the ballers and the listers, yeah? Chum, 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 chum. It's like the old lift stop, yeah? And it was just, it was just crazy. And you, at certain times of the day, when it's finished, you get all these people that own big restaurants. It's unbelievable, yeah? That own restaurants and they're walking around the market picking up everything, oranges, apples, pears, tomatoes, loads of stuff that's been chucked in, in you know, on, on, on the cobbles. It's so much stuff. And then you go out, out, out of this place um, into, the, into the open market um, and that was called uh, Block 1, Block 2, Block 3, Block 4, up to Block 6, the Dirt Track, Nolders, and it was like all different names, you know, and all the old stalls and it was like Dirt Track, and it's, it, it was like, how can it, it's like a village, as they say, it's like a village. And, you know, and it's all about, the market is all about strength, people who are strong, you know, big people, and the biggest people in the market where the Wells is, yeah. Um, you've got Georgie Wells, Billy Wells, Arthur Wells, Elfie Wells, Tommy Wells. You got seven brothers, but I don't know all their names, yeah. And they're all ex fighters, and they're all big heavyweights, 19, 20 stone, all six foot threes six foot four men uh, you have to give them uh, a lot a lot of love yeah because they're like this <laughs> they're, they're just massive yeah and they're all brothers and they're all can have a right fight yeah the wells is proper fighters mate you know and i had a lot of respect for all of them yeah and you, you have to have respect you have to have big respect for these people when they're driving around on their listers, and you look at them, they're not even bothered to just doing their bits and pieces. They don't care about you. They see you doing silly things, they've done they've gone through that yourself. And you had Billy Wells, um, he owned that great big place um in Brentford. Anybody ever gone that to Brentford Pass, going towards a Brentford High Street, you see a place on the right hand side that sells all um, army stuff that belongs to Billy Wells, yeah. Billy Wells are also owned as you go past. Uh, you've got the tower, the clock tower, goes over Q Bridge. You've got loads of shops there. Billy Wells also owned that, yeah. <clears throat> all the Wellses that was there was all businessmen, yeah. And the worst one out of the Wellses was Elfie Wells. Elfie Wells was a good fighter, mate, but wicked. Um, he was the one out of the family that was more wicked than any of them, yeah? Uh, you couldn't win with him, yeah? You just couldn't win with Elfie. I mean, the other brothers was all toe to toe, would have a scrap with you, and if you beat them, it would be forgot about. But I'd, ever, I'd never ever see, all the time I was in the market, that any of them Welleses get beat. There was all proper stand-up fights, big man not any stone and could really have it, yeah? But Elf. Elf was a bit more, um, not so heavy as them. Uh, good fighter on the cobbles, but dangerous on the cobbles. If you beat Elfie, he'd come back and he'd, well, just stab you up, mate. And he would do you damage. He wouldn't muck about. He would, you know, he would do you big damage. So he had more respect than any of the other brothers, yeah. Um, his son, uh, the other day, he spoke to me on the phone. Um, you know, just saying thanks, Ray, the way you talk about my my family, you know, my dad and this, that and the other. But his dad has got so many stories, you know, so so many big stories. Remember seeing him at parties and when people used to be petrified when they walked into the party. You know, you've got big guys, six foot three, six foot four, walking into a party like brothers. You're in trouble, you know. You know, if anything kicks off, you're in a lot of trouble. A lot of people used to walk out. It's the same in the pubs. When Elfie used to walk in a pub, used to get a lot of people just sad enough and walk out. You know, this is it. They know if it kicked off, it would kick off. He would, he would do plenty of damage. So you know, all through the market, you know, all, all the most of the wells were all with the growers. Yeah, all the growers, that was with them. Um, 
there was like, bit, them growers were so mean, it was unbelievable. They didn't want to give, I got a job one day, well not one day, one week, with a company called Browns, yeah? Browns Growers, yeah? Doing all the cabbages, the lettuces, the the spinaches, everything, you know, potatoes, everything. Everything to do with, with uh, uh, growers, you had it, yeah? And they was, had these big, grappy listers, massive listers that could carry so much stuff, you wouldn't believe, yeah? Anyway, so I got a job with him. I was, uh, worked there a whole week, and I used to move some stuff. But I never used to keep my tickets, which you should do, yeah? And at the end of the week, he'd give me some money. I went, what's that for? He went, that's your wages. I said, no, mate, that's about a day's wages, you know what I mean? So then he tried to tell me that I got hold of, um, what's his name? Billy, Billy Sherwell? Was it Billy, not Billy Sherwell? Anyway, I got hold of uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of the top uh, men in there, um, and I got hold of him, and I said, look, this ain't right, you know? And he walked over and started talking, and looked in the books, and said, no, it ain't right, right. He said, uh, come see me later on. He said, and uh, I'll, I'll get you sorted. You know, and he come back later and he give me a couple of hundred pounds on top of my other bit of money that he gave me. He said, listen, you're not working there no more. That's it, you know, he, uh, no way. So I'm gonna give you another job. And then he gave me another job with Vitacress, a place called Vitacress. I worked there um, with two guys, Kenny Griffiths, Kenny Beagle, and they was uh, Ike Doe, uh, uh, something like 10 Dan, Ike Doe champions, and they was just dressed normal people. You'd never look at them and think, wow, they, they, they just look normal, no, nothing, you know? Uh, never caused no problems, but mate, you wanna upset these, mate. These, these two in the market, I should imagine, they had more respect than anybody, really. They were proper, yeah? And I loved them to death. They taught me a lot about the, the, the market, a lot about doing how to stack things up and do this and do that and how to milk, milk things because most porters in the market, they milk, they milk the, the, the tomatoes, they milk the oranges, bananas, they all come up and grab me cudgels of, of stuff every day and most of them have got shops. They've all got green grocery shops or some other shop or something, this shop, that shop. Uh, they're all, they're all market people are very clever people. Um, I was just a fighter in there. I just wanted to learn to fight, really. Um, I was into being strong, you know, wanting to be strong, pick up the barrel a certain way. There was one man in there called Joe Strong, yeah? Joe Strong had a big company, a uh, massive company in there. And he was an ex-porter. Joe Strong, Jewish, big guy, glasses, massive, massive, really big guy. So strong. He was the strongest man in Brentford Market in his day, yeah? He used to get all of a barrel, because then days they didn't have listers, it was all barrels, yeah? So he used to, they used to get all of them, he used to, he used to be able to turn the barrel over, hold it and turn it over, which is virtually impossible. So you try it, mate, it's madness. But he used to do it, yeah? And he used to lift them up above his head and press the barrel. You know, it was crazy how much a bow weighs. And his thing was like always challenged. And I got mates with a guy called Martin Worsfold, who will become one of my co fans, yeah? And Martin Worsfold was on a potato firm. And this potato firm he worked for was one of the biggest potato firms in the market, yeah? So they're busy all day doing taters. He had arms, mate. He had arms like that, mass, he had massive arms and massive shoulders. He used to always turn his his uh, shirt up to the top and his arms would be bulging out, you know, bulging. And he'd pick up taters like nothing, you know, throw them. And when he had the big sack ones, the big ones, 112, 120 pound, 130 pound bags, he'd nut them easy, bosh, bosh, press them and his shoulders. And but he could have a white fight. He could really have a fight. And him, Colin Crattle, uh, Colin Crattle was my pal. 
I work for him North Sides. That's the first one of the first jobs I ever had in there. Worked for North Sides as a night porter, but I was a young kid. Shouldn't have really been in the market, but I got the job, yeah. Him and Colin Cratt are always loggerheads. They was always looking at each other. Colin would say something and Martin was mug him off, really. Uh, then you had another guy uh, that was the same as that. Like he's the very quiet big guy that could have a fight it was a guy called Derek Pierce. Derek Pierce um, was a big guy, loved fighting, loved boxing. Um, I got very close with Derek. Um, I used to go train with Derek nearly every morning. I used to run around Gunsbury Park with him. He picked me up to go in the park, maybe for an hour, run around the park, but come back and finish our work off, yeah? But I used to do it most mornings, go to Gunsbury Park with him, run around there. Uh, sometimes we go to Hanmore Boxing Clubs and do a lot of sparring, training in there. Yeah, I used to love Derek Pierce, mate. And Derek Pierce has got a good name. He's got a brother in there called Alan Pierce. There's two of them. Most of the people in the market, they're brothers. There's always brothers. Uh, Mark, the Brentford market was closed market, yeah? A closed market. The only way in that market was all all related. Everyone was related to got people in the market, you know? There was no outsiders. Me, I must have been one of the only outsiders in the market. Uh, I got in there through another guy called Terry Woods. Me and Terry and Johnny Wells, not the Wellses, the Wellses, is the Wells is Wells all different, yeah. John, me and John, uh, I used to meet John down at Boathouse, uh, go down there, I used to fight down at Boathouse and all that. I used to always have fights in there. Um, Johnny Wells could have a white fight as well, he's dead now, God rest, rest in peace, Johnny Wells. Nice fella, but could have a really fight, really real fight. He could fight, mate. And I used to meet him down at Boathouse, me too, Woods, go to all the pubs, I used to drink much, go there, and one day Terry Woods said to me, listen, do you want a job? I went, yeah, I'd love a job. He went, in a fruit market? I went, yeah, I want that job. He went, okay, uh, let me see if I can get you a job in there. And uh, he's come out of my house, he said, come, I'll take you down the market. Uh, took me down the market, and, and I met, uh, some some porters and some stand holders and all this that and the other and night you know and met these guys on north side uh big big place there and got with the salesman he said yeah, okay you can become a night porter give me a night porter job no cards nothing just night porter loved it uh i met colin crattle I hadn't met, I hadn't met the other guy, Mickey Knoll, that worked with Colin Crowd. I hadn't met them at all, the porters. So I went in there um, early one night, half 11, quarter 12, went in there with the keys to undo the, undo the lock and sh put the shutters up on all the stands. Started to, you know, and all outside there were potatoes, oranges, apples, pears, bananas, everything was outside. It's pitched outside, which I shouldn't really pitch until 12 o'clock. You know, so the night porter can get it anyway. As I pulled up to undo the locks, the keys he jumps out of a lorry, a Bedford lorry, round those look of Bedford, jumps out, what are you doing, son? I went, I'm a night porter, mate. He went, listen, what do you mean night porter? You're trying to nick my stuff, aren't you? I went, no, mate, I ain't trying to nick nothing. And this keys was big. Shorter than me, but big shoulders. And you could see he was a bit, he used to walk along bounce along like this, you know. Big hands. He had big hands, Colin, massive hands, Colin Cracknell. And uh, he said, listen, he went, what's your job? I said, look, my night, night porter, put it He said, right, right, don't make too much mess outside here. Don't be putting big loads of stuff out here, because we're the ones who got to put it back. We don't want to put it back. Anyway, big lorries of come potatoes, apples, pears, bananas, tomatoes, I was the milk start milking, because Johnny Wills, he worked for a company called Phillips, Phillips's, and Johnny Wills would help out night time sometimes, he was a porter in the day, but he helped out night times when there wasn't no one to come, do it. So he was helping out for two weeks in there, yeah. So I'd go to John, because I knew Johnny got me the job with Terry, 
and he'd go, look, let me show you how to milk things, yeah? So he'd get the cottle, cottle box there, and he get, said, look, start taking one tomato, two tomatoes out of each box. There was thousands and thousands of tomatoes that I had to stack up, yeah? Put them in big stack, 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 stack. Thousands and thousands of tomatoes. So I should take them out and put them in the bushel boxes. And he said, okay. He said, it's, 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 mate, he said, one or two tomatoes out of each box. They don't miss it, mate. They don't miss it. You know what I mean? Because it's always over the top anyway. So I wind up with big cottage boxes of tomatoes. So Colin Crattle said to me, I understand you're milking stuff out of here. He said, I don't care about you doing it, but the only people you sell it to is me. Not sell it to me, you give it to me and I'll sell it and I'll give you money out of it because it's coming up in my stand. So I thought, I said, oh, look, cool. I'm not poor, I could do what I want to do, you know? But I didn't go and take it to, I wasn't that really bothered because I like my job anyway. And Johnny Wells was telling me, fuck, Colin, I don't know about what he says, do what you want to do, right? You know, I thought John leave off because Colin Crackle was one of the governors in the boot market. He was always fighting, he never stopped fighting. Every day you see him have a fight. And he's, he was, uh, he had, used to get lorries out, he used to get geezers to park outside his stand in lorries and vans, and he'd go in and stack them up for money. It's what he always do. No one used to, no one in the market, except people like the Wellses, and you know, other little people that can have a right fight, uh, really used to um, stand things from Colin. They're the only ones that maybe fuck, fuck him and just put it on the floor. All the others used to get on the lorry yeah, and put it stack on the lorry. Yeah. So Colin would fight all the time. Uh, he taught me how to fight Colin Cracknell uh, properly. Um, I was going down London Transport fighting. I was also going down Hogarth fighting where he was a trainer with Harry Hollands, yeah? And so I was to train down there as well. So he said to me one day, uh, look, I'm gonna teach you how to do box on the street, proper, right? I went up and fight, he went, no proper. So he brought in a set of bag gloves, bag gloves, you know, the old bag gloves, the old fashioned ones, yeah? So he said, what? Well, Put one on your right hand, and I'm going to put one on my left hand. So you've got your left hand with one, with that one, I've got my right hand with that one. I'm like, okay. He said, come on, we're going out and have a row. Me and you're going to have a little teacher at a fight. Mate, we used to fight out there every day, every morning, say, what, 10 o'clock. And if you all green grocers around watching us, and paupers watching us, we'd be to be out there fighting proper. Fighting, proper fighting, yeah? And like, I used to get smashed to pieces, cut my lips, my eyes. I didn't bother because I was learning, you know, learning all the time how to get it proper, yeah? How to bomb, weave, move, and everything. And I was getting bashed up. I was always getting bashed up. It didn't matter uh, about me getting cut lips and all that and all that. It didn't matter. It mattered when you were drinking a cup of tea, like, all that, you know, but it doesn't matter. It didn't matter. Some days you have to go, no, not today, Cole, because I'm a bit smashed up, I can't do it, I'm going to do it for all that, yeah. And it got better and better and better, and I see Colin fight. I mean, Colin Cracknell used to fight. I mean, I didn't, uh, when I was doing my own losses fighting, I started my own show, it's called, uh, what's it called, it's called uh, Hillman Promotions in Acton Town Hall, I had two big promotions here, yeah? And the first one, I forget the guy I fought, knocked him out in the first round, but then I got hold of Colin, do you want to fight? Do you want to fight me? He went, yeah, yeah, I said, look, you get tickets, you sell the tickets, that's your money, but he kept selling loads of tickets. So he was getting more money than me. So when the day come, um, he was going to fight, um, Colin really tried to mug me off, really tried to mug me off. He went out to bash me up. And when she did really hurt me bad, yeah? He hit me with a right hand, good right hand. Um, he hurt me that bad, I thought, he's really out to hurt me, but he really wants to show me up my own show. So I picked him up like a rag doll, but bang, I nutted him about three times. And he ran out the ring crying, jumping out the ring crying. And 
And I said to myself, you know, that's it. You know, I'm the governor of the market in a way, you know. And But I wasn't, because there were so many in there could bash me up anyway. There was, I mean, in the food market, not bash me up, but in the food market, you'd have to, you'd, no one in there would bow down to you. No one in there would, even, even the, even the, the stand man, the boys in there, even the, the guys that take all the things, you know, you, no one in that market would go, all right, no. And it would look, everyone would want to fight you. They'd all fight, mate. It doesn't matter who was in the market, who, what, porters, what, this, what, they'd all have a fight. And no one, the greatest thing was Elstead's there. Yeah? Elstead's in the market was a tea place where you're going to be cups of tea. You've got all your cafes outside. Let me tell you about Brentwood Market. You come in in the morning, boy. I'm night porter. So because I'm a night porter, I go out at sometimes three or four o'clock to see the cafes open up so you can go and get some food. The inside one opens up first, Elstead's inside. But I prefer to go outside to the, to the other cafes, yeah? But inside they do big mugs, everything's big, big mugs of coffee, big mugs of tea, but you've got sausage rolls, egg rolls, bacon rolls, any roll you want, you've got, you've got big breakfasts in big massive plates, I'm on about big, it was, a, it was an Italian house, it's, and it was the main one in the market, everyone, used to, all the green growers used to go there, but we used to like, I used to like going to the cafes across the roads. There was about nine cafes across the road, from Brentford Market, you know, all open threes and fours in the morning for the porters and, 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 and greengrocers and, 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 and lorry drivers, yeah? So I'd go in there and I'd go and get my, uh, so as you walk across the road, you've got all these cabs, you go in there, you've got your bib, you've got your big bib on, your, your leather bib and, and, and your hat, you know, and your turned up, tr turn up stay fresh trousers with your Dr. Martins on, you look as far, you know, and you're all flash, you know, you're all flash, young kid, young flash, 16, 17 year old boy. You got all the others in there, Colin Crack, the wet lock, can have a right fight coming in, big shoulders, you know, and you think so. And I used to walk out with that, when they used to walk out, I used to walk out, yeah, and be strutting down the road, like I'd be strutting down the road with this bib, this leather bib. And, Dr. Martin, stay for his jeans, and like, look the part, little vest, big muscles poking out, just started, you know what I mean? And they used to walk down there, you know, the governors, mate, it was like, it was a different world, mate. Going in that market was a different world. Uh, Sometimes when you get the, when you get the growers, when you get the uh, travellers coming there, selling Christmas trees, uh, proper, Proper travellers, mate. Not like your, you know, your, your, your cowboys now. You get your Johnny, your Frankums, your Les Stevens, and all their big families, all fighters. Proper fighters, mate. You know, and we would have, I mean, there'd always be fights on block one or block six or whatever. There'd always be fights with the, with the travellers out there doing the Christmas trees, yeah? There'd always be fights. You see Johnny Frankum, Les Stevens, big, big overcoats on, flat caps. Big scarves, you know. Hi, oh, Chubby, how are you going? And everyone, everyone in there want to fight, mate. They didn't muck about, and they give me a job as a barrow boy, yeah, uh, delivering uh, the trees. And on the barrows, you got uh, a thing inside. You lift up, yeah, and so it's on the barrow at an angle like that, and you just stack the trees up. You stack them up as hard as you can, and you're there. And it doesn't get the market was all cobbles. And it was all ups and downs, you know, and it was like, you know, I swear to God, it was your legs and your shoulders are pulling this. And then we get somewhere, you've got maybe a hundred trees on there, you're unloading the trees, it cuts all your arms. And the job, I loved it, yeah. And Les Stevens and Johnny Frankums and all the Frankums, all the Stevenses. Oh, she's very good, Chubby. Oh, no, I told you. It was like, just different, mate. A different world, yeah. And when they'd all go, all that lot would go from the, the trees, and then they start getting the big lorries coming in from from the from from different countries, bringing the peaches in and all them sort of things and the flowers, you know. And they park up there in their big wagons, and then me, Johnny Wells, 
and uh, a couple of other people with good the locks and sometimes it set the alarm off, sometimes it wouldn't and we'd open the back, we never have blisters because of the noise, the babbers we'd get in there and load all the peaches and the plums and stuff and you know, and then go away slowly and go and get your twos and three hundred quid at a time, do you know what I mean? And it was said, loved it, but you had to be very careful of the security. There was a little Scotsman, yeah, a security guard. He was one bad man. He would plot up an eye on you, yeah? He would plot up an eye on you. But uh, one day, uh, Johnny Wells and some other people plotted up on him and they'd done him bad, not bashed him up, but done him with uh, some uh, some some vegetables, some potatoes and stuff, and pushed it on him, yeah? And uh, he was like off for weeks, uh, done his back and everything like that. It didn't make a bow. <laughs> but, you know, we was, I mean, I was earning so much money, mate, in there as a kid, you know. You get your two or three hundred quid a week. Then, as young kids, you know, in the 60s, in the beginning, you know, like, it's all 60s, you know, and I think to myself, what a fool I was, yeah, to lose them jobs, to start doing more villainy and thieving and breaking into this and breaking into that. Uh, we broke into one thing, me and my mate Terry Woods one day, and we nicked, I don't know, 30, 40 boxes of cheese, um, what, eggs, everything that goes into a shop, we nicked in a big van. Went back to the market, and sold it in the market at about 1500 quid each, but you had a lot of money when you are in them days, yeah? And I used to go to Richmond, a big shop called the Ivy Shop in Richmond, and the Ivy Shop was an American shop, and it sold, sold everything, like Ben Sherman shirts had just come out with the buttons, all the staples stuff, all the Ivy Brogues, it was like the business. If you had any of this stuff, you was tops. And I was going there to get my suits done, my jackets, my shirts, and look the business. You're a young kid looking in the park and you're in the foot market. And these, I used to go to the boathouse sometimes. You got big moy bush, massive moy bush there. The guy I was talking about that uh, owned, that run, went to a pub and, and Lou Yates reckons he bashed him up now. You know, forget about that. But he had boot, he, he had the boathouse. He was in charge of the boat house, six foot eight, six foot nine, built like a shit house, you know, and he didn't care about no one, but good old boy, get in there, and all that. That's the way he talked, yeah? And he used to say to me, listen, you, any trouble tonight, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble, no more trouble, Ray. I go, no, I promise. And I'd go in there and start start fights. I was, and uh, one day, I was went downstairs, because he wouldn't let me upstairs, because I was always fighting. Went downstairs to the bar downstairs, and... As I walked in, they were saying, oh, it's Ray Hill, it's going to be trouble tonight. I've come in here with a big scarf around my neck, the, the market scarf, all the market gear, by the bib. Walked in there, I walked in there, and they were saying, you know, it's going to be off tonight. He was off, this guy started, I nutted him, I bashed him right up, really bashed him up, yeah. And the porter got hold of me, me and the porter had a fight outside. The porter was bashing me up, and I kicked him up the groin, and I won. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I won. But, uh, me and him met again and had another bit of a fight, but it was better that time. Yeah, and and then, I mean, the fruit market, I mean, really, uh, the fruit market to me was the best place that you could ever be, to ever learn everything I learned, yeah? Uh, the fighting, earning money, meeting good people, mate, meeting good people, uh, going from there, to, to worse really, to better, to worse, to worse, to worse, to worse. Because that's where I started getting my big bird, my big sentences, you know, because I learned to feed from the market. I learned to do this, that, and I learned getting fit. I was so fit, it was crazy that, you know, you, you get a lorry comes in, like 10 tonne of potatoes, right? And you've got to unload that lorry, they park it up, and I'll shoot to unload it, and you're unloading that, and putting that all on barrels and listers. You're going, boom, but you got this big, and you're all, and you're throwing it to each other. You know, and you believe it or not, you're so fit and so strong. And I used to go down the swimming pool, um, 
Well, it's got down to Chiswick Swimming Pool every day. We just go down there in the summertime. I was coming, going to market at night, getting there half 11, 12 o'clock, unload all my loads, put my stuff out the front, and then help the porters out. When they port was finished, go down, to, go down to the swimming pool and fall asleep in the sun and get sunburnt, yeah? And have fights in the market and, and, and there's go fights, sorry, fights in the swimming pool with people. He was always fighting, it is mad. And that's how I met Big Spike. Uh, the bald headed guy that I told a story up earlier on. Uh, that's how I met him down there because he was getting cheeky with young girls and I told him off and he told me whatever to do and uh, I went crash, hit him on the chin and it was like hitting a stone wall. He shook his head and I thought I'm dead and he just told me to behave myself yeah, and go over there and I did put my towel between my legs and walked over there for oh, fuck him. But then you get to hear that he was a big wrestler as well. Massive man, mate. Very stones, massive. You know, and and then the market, go home, go home from, from the swimming pool, get in bed and wake up half 11, half so tired, and walk to the market. Eyes closing, you're so tired, yeah? Get to the market, go in there, and there's a lorry load, there's a lorry waiting for you, full of oranges, and you think, oh, what? And then you got to go in there, and it will load you up again. You wake up, put nut, you want to start to nut the oranges. First of all, you take them on the shoulder, and then you got to put them up, because you put your ladders up, you nut them, you know what I mean? You're learning, you're getting big, strong, powerful, you're milking all the stuff, you're earning plenty of money, Colin's coming, you're getting out of the coals, and you're fighting. My day was, my, that was my day. That was my day. Night times, getting in there, unloading lorries, milking all the stuff, putting in cottle boxes, taking it over to the warehouse, and then Colin coming, buying it all off me. I was nicking loads, licking stuff out of other people's stands, putting it in the warehouse, Colin and buy it off me. Me and Colin, they're getting in there, having a fight, having a fight in the market. It was like, oh, mate. It was a young boy, the best time that you could ever have, yeah. The market was massive. Massive, massive, massive. Now the guy called John, forget his name now, he worked in Munro's, a big place, banana place, apple place. It was, John was about six foot four, good looking guy. Him and Crattle always mucking about. John would always run around throwing punches at him. Crattle couldn't get nowhere near him. John was a nice, nice guy. He taught me how to thieve as well, how to thieve things. Do you know you're learning all the time how to thieve out of motors, to nick this and nick that and nick that. At Christmas time, uh, you're running around looking for all the motors, you know, looking for the nuts, where they hide the nuts, where they hide the dates. So you're looking for where they're hiding them and you're going back, oh yeah, in there, in there. You know what I mean? He'd go in there and chuck a couple of dates out to me, I'll run away with the dates, you know. Even if you only get a five or a box of dates or whatever it is, you're working a day, in the course of the day, you might go and get 200 quid, you know? And it's nice, isn't it? It's like you're a kid, earning big money. Um, and do you know, like, I used to go down Acton High Street uh, from the market sometimes and go to Lions's, Lions's Tea House. Anybody remember that? <laughs> Fucking hell. Next to a place called Woolworths. Walls, it was like walls, was just so everything, you know. And you got lions tea house. I was just going there, all of my mates were sitting in lions. I'd come from the market, uh, I'd get a bus or a truck bus uh, up, up, up to uh, lions tea house. I had my bib on, I don't want the hat on, I don't want to get up, big muscles poking at me. Well, I mean, and it's, it's, you know, I love the market, man. I loved it, I loved it so much, the market. But the only thing about the market, it gives you so much time. Because when you got, when I, when I start to um, work in the daytime, in the, in the mornings, and finishing at 12 o'clock, I was still a wide awake, even though I'd been there all night, I was still wide awake, yeah? When I didn't want to go down to the, didn't want to go down to the, to uh, uh, Chiswick swimming pool, I'd go out with my other mates, Martin and we look for bits of work. So now I'm looking for bits of work uh, to rob, going on the pavement and robbing places all the time. 
you know, coming back, uh, you know, going back to the market and having plenty of money and, and then thinking to myself, it's a good job, you know what I mean? I'm going out every day. And, uh, um, we're looking at bits of work and we're going to do nine robberies, coming back, you know, and then start counting out the monies. And it was like madness. I was never stopped. I was always, always, always at it. I was always thieving, you know? And it's like everything you do, when you keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it, one day, you know, as it says, uh, you can do a thousand bits of work, the police only want one. You can get away with a thousand, but all the police want is one. You know what I mean? So you get, you've been at it for ages. Boom, the one comes and you get nicked. And then you go to ball stores, your YPs and all them sort of things. And then you go to big prisons and it goes on and on and on. You know, and when I come out of my big prison one day, um, and I was doing prize fighting, unlicensed fighting, Lewisham, and all around there, I decided to do my own promotions with a guy called Bob Coleman. Uh, we done our own promotion. I'm trying to get some. I'm trying to get some, some something I can put on my my podcasts and you know my videos about the old market, about the old market, and also about Bob Coleman. Uh, have, we done the, have we done all the boxing and this, that and the other? But the old market is finished. There's no more photos. You can't go down and get any more photos. I found one the other, oh, I found one the other day. Someone put on this guy, Michael, he had no teeth. And this guy, Michael, was an absolute raving nutcase. He could, I forget his name, second name. He could have a fight, mate. He could fight. And you know, look, there's so many people in there that stay well away from him because he could have a right fight. He had about five brothers in the market also, but he was the number one and everybody stayed away from him, yeah? Underestimated him because he had no teeth in his head, but he used to muck about all the time, but he could have a right fight. You know, you knew this guy stayed away from him. Yeah. So because I was in the foot market and I knew lots of money, and Colin Cracknell, um, when I had my own promotions, I went looking for him, and I said, Colin, look, you know, do you want to fight me? Colin said, yes, and he sold absolutely thousands of tickets. And uh, anyway, we've had that bit on there, when he, when he bashed me up, really not, but I nutted him and bashed him up. Um, it's, it's the fruit market, it's a legend. The fruit market is a legend, it's like, it's, not many people out there now are alive, yeah? I'm on the lot, I'm on the, maybe the only one of left from the markets, from the foot market. I think Martin Walsh, still alive, he still trains, Martin, he's like me, I train every day, he's the same, he trains a lot, yeah? Martin Worsfold, big, Derek Pierce, he's still about, he walks around, she's at high sport in little shorts, he's still about, Derek, I'd love to meet the old porters and do maybe uh, videos of my podcast from let them t tell you the stories that we used to go through in the market, you know, about nicking things and this, that and the other. And it's mad. It's mad, mate. Uh, and people in there, you know, um, you've got Philip Collins, yeah? Philip Collins, he's alive today, Phil, used to work in a foot market. Uh, Bobby Collins' brother or cousin, uh, you had Wacker Collins, Bobby Collins, Philip Collins, they was all brothers or cousins. Another one, David Collins, uh, they was very, very, they, was, they could all have a fight. Uh, Philip was very quiet. Uh, Philip Collins owns about 19 shops now and stalls and houses, but all through the market all through the market, whatever, lots of money in the market, gone in there, nicked their little bits of fruit every day, every day taking it, selling it, but all of a sudden get a shop, get a shop, get a stall. He had a couple of stalls down Chiswick High Street for the fruit market and all the stuff he'd get, he'd get cheap, he'd get it so cheap, he'd sell it for good money and earn lots and lots of money. Now the guy is a multi-millionaire, fair play to him. You know, and a lot of them, people in the fruit market are millionaires because they've all put their money in the right way. Everyone, it's crazy really, 
when you think about it, yeah, that in the foot market, everybody I know in the foot market that I did know, they're all thieves. They're all thieves. They all thieve off a motor and sell it to another geezer who's got a greengrocer shop. And someone's nicking off that greengrocer and they sell it to another greengrocer. And it goes on. Everybody in that food market is buying and selling off of someone. someone. And it's crazy that all the porters in there and the stand boys and all that all become absolutely minted because they use their money. The only one that didn't was Silly Ray, yeah, that I decided to start doing arm hobbies and going a bit over the top and getting Big Bird and uh, never learning my lesson until at the very end I get this IPP and I think that's it, no more, I've had enough, yeah? So, you know, out of 20 odd, 30 odd years, you've had enough. And is that enough? <laughs> is that is that enough, mate? It's too much. 30 years of your life, gone. Or more, gone. Just gone. You know what I mean? And you wish now that you could live that other 30 years again. Do you know? The only thing that's done for me is to keep me younger. Prison has kept me younger because I've always trained. And it was always a mental thing, yeah? And I never let it get to me, like lots of people. All I've done is train, 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 and that's it, you know? Anyway, uh, I'll do another big one about the market, because the market's quite, you can go on and on about the market, about things we've done and didn't do, and this, that, and the other, and people we bashed up, and hurt. there's so many things about the market. Anyways, it's very, very well. Uh, please press the like button and subscribe, and thanks very much for listening. Nice one.